A man accused of adultery takes refuge in a convent, but things get wild when all the nuns try to seduce him. We'll see what happens next in today's recap of the film The Little Hours. Make sure to like the video and also subscribe to the channel. Now without further ado, let's get started. The film starts in the Middle Ages, when nun Fernanda is bringing her donkey back to the convent. While she's in the stables, another nun named Ginevra asks Fernanda why she missed the morning prayers, and Fernanda says that the donkey escaped and she had to find him. While they're talking, the gardener says good morning to them, but the nuns get angry and tell him to mind his own business. Later that morning, they receive a sermon from Pastor Tommaso, who looks after the convent. After the sermon, Sister Marie asks Fernanda why was she missing, and Fernanda gives the same excuse that she gave earlier. While these nuns are going about their daily chores, Sister Alessandra is busy with her embroidery. She is the daughter of a rich lord who supports the church, and Ginevra and Fernanda often make fun of her behind her back. That afternoon, Alessandra gets a visit from her father. Alessandra wants to leave this place, and she asks about the lord, who has been asking for her hand. Her father tells her that he doesn't really have a dowry for her at the moment, so there are no suitors for her anymore. He tells her to work on her embroidery before leaving her. That evening, Alessandra is walking around with other nuns when the gardener tries to talk to them. They all get angry and start beating up the poor man, all the while saying some horrible things to him. While they're on the rampage, Father Tommaso is leaving for the market to sell the embroidery. But before he leaves, the gardener tells him what happened before quitting the job. While Tommaso is getting this bad news, Lord Bruno is having dinner with his wife in the nearby castle. Bruno is a brutish man, and his wife is fed up with his nonsense. She is more interested in the servant named Masetto. She is having an affair with Masetto, and that night while they're making love, Tommaso comes outside their room. Masetto quickly jumps from the window and tries to run, but Bruno sees him. He follows Masetto to the servant quarters, and he checks the heartbeats of all the sleeping men. He finds out the culprit and cuts some of Masetto's hair to recognize him in the morning. However, Masetto cuts the hair of all the servants. So in the morning, Bruno is unable to recognize the man he is looking for. All the servants get haircuts, and at breakfast, Bruno again starts talking about some horrible stuff about war. His wife finally tells him to shut up, and this makes Bruno even angrier. That day, the lady stops Masetto while he's working, and starts getting intimate with him even though he tells her to stop. His fears become a reality when he notices Bruno looking at him. Bruno's guards chase Masetto, and he has to run for miles to get away from his pursuers. He finally reaches a stream and finds Tommaso who has lost all the embroidery in the river. He is also drunk and clearly needs help. He doesn't want Masetto to come near him, but Masetto still helps the pastor, and even repairs his cart. Tommaso finds out that Masetto needs a place to stay, so he takes the young man to the convent with him. There Masetto finally finds some food, and Tommaso even offers him wine. By midnight, they are both really drunk. This is when Masetto decides to give a confession. He admits his relationship with Bruno's wife, and even shares the sexual details with Tommaso, who is rather surprised. Masetto also tells Tommaso about how he needs to lay low for a while, so Tommaso decides to hire him. The next morning, he introduces Masetto to the sister Marais. He claims that Masetto is deaf and mute, and he will be their new gardener. He also tells her about the lost embroidery. Masetto immediately starts working, and Ginevra is the first one to introduce herself to him. Alessandra, on the other hand, is teaching when Fernanda starts messing with her, and they both start arguing. This is when they notice Masetto, who smiles at Alessandra. While Alessandra likes this gesture, Fernanda loses her temper and nearly chops off Masetto's head with an axe. However, Marie intervenes and introduces Masetto to the other nuns. She also takes a walk with Alessandra and tells her that she has to work overtime to make up for the lost embroidery. This is heartbreaking for Alessandra, who only has one old nun to help her. She also breaks her tool and goes to get it fixed. Meanwhile, Masato is getting back to his shed and Ginevra is keeping an eye on him. She is surprised to see Alessandra go into the shed. Alessandra asks Masetto to fix her tool while she rants about how hard her life has been. When she comes out, Ginevra and Fernanda both find her behavior a little suspicious. That evening, the nuns are confessing after prayers, but for some reason, Fernanda just repeats the other people's confessions. And this annoys Father Tommaso. 
At night, Tommaso visits Maceto, and they spend the night drinking. Meanwhile, Fernanda is visited by a girl named Marta who has brought some wine. They both go to Alessandra's room and are having a good time, but that's when Ginevra comes to Alessandra's room. The nuns drag her in and make her drink even though she doesn't want to. And after a few minutes, Ginevra is just as drunk as the rest of them and enjoying herself. Around this time, Marta tells the other girls how good intimacy can be. The nuns are sad to hear this, as they are supposed to stay celibate their entire lives. However, Marta and Fernanda start kissing Ginevra, and Fernanda ends up sleeping with her. The next morning, Alessandra goes to Maceto's shed, where he's digging pits. She offers to help him, but it's clear that she finds him attractive. When she takes off her veil, she kisses him, and they are both shocked. In the heat of the moment, they start getting intimate out in the open, but soon they come back to their senses. During the morning prayer, Fernanda notices the dirt on Alessandra's dress and also on her fingernails. Later that day, Ginevra and Fernanda are washing clothes, and Fernanda is trying to ignore Ginevra, who feels great about last night. Just then, Alessandra gets there and asks to wash her clothes. She's no good with chores, so she asks Ginevra to wash her dress while she cheerfully goes back to her room. Fernanda is certain at this point that something is up, so she leaves too. After a while, Ginevra goes after her, but Fernanda is nowhere to be found. Ginevra eventually finds Fernanda in the woods making some sort of drug with Marta. She puts the drug in her eyes and uses some blood to make her cheeks red. After this, both girls go into Maceto's shed. He doesn't know what to do as the girls force themselves on him. However, he starts enjoying the whole thing pretty soon. But then Marta asks Fernanda to leave after saying that Maceto will do. They come across Ginevra outside the shed, but Ginevra is too nervous to ask them anything. However, she does find out that Fernanda was just fooling around with her last night. That night, Tommaso is again drinking with Maceto, who tells the priest that he is starting to like the convent now. He even wants to work for some time, and Tommaso is overjoyed by this. Their drinking session is disturbed, however, by Marais, who needs to talk to Tommaso. They have to receive Bishop Bartolomeo the next morning. While they're doing this, Maceto goes to Alessandra's room, and they start making love. They are so engrossed in each other that they don't even notice an old nun who just enters the room and starts working on her embroidery. When Maceto sees her, he screams. Alessandra asks him to hide, and she gets back into her working chair. The old nun didn't notice them, but they are still in danger because Marais brings Bishop into the room. When the Bishop leaves, Maceto quickly gets out of Alessandra's room. That night, Marais is explaining church finances to Bishop when Ginevra comes there and claims that Fernanda is up to some mischief. Marais doesn't believe her, and this makes Ginevra angry. In her frustration, she takes the same drug, but instead of putting it in her eyes, she drinks it. She then puts blood on her cheeks and starts looking for Maceto. Meanwhile, Maceto is busy explaining to Alessandra why he was pretending to be deaf and mute. When they hear Ginevra outside, Alessandra hides. Ginevra is unhinged and under influence. She gets on top of Maceto and starts kissing him, but soon realizes that she's into girls. She is hallucinating and tries to hide, and that's when she spots Alessandra. They are still talking when Fernanda comes into the shed with a knife. She ties up Maceto and forces him to go with her. As they leave, Alessandra goes after them, and Ginevra also follows her. All the way, Ginevra is feeling nauseous, and she keeps throwing up. They eventually catch up to Fernanda, and that's when they see this cult of witches dancing around a fire. Ginevra loves this and takes off her clothes before joining them. The witches are performing dark magic on Maceto, who begs them not to kill him. They are about to stab him when Ginevra causes chaos, and the ritual has to be stopped. Ginevra also runs away with the donkey, and Fernanda has to go after her. Ginevra goes to the convent and starts screaming. The bishop wakes up and goes to see what's happening. Ginevra runs to him and tells him about the witches. Fernanda and the others also show up, and Ginevra tells everyone's crimes to the bishop, who's losing his cool. He asks Marais to wake up, but she comes out of the room wearing a pant on her head. The bishop is even more shocked after hearing Maceto speak. To make things worse, Tommaso also comes out of Marais' room. The next day, Bishop conducts trials. The first one is Ginevra, and Bishop is shocked to see how many crimes she committed. He tells her to skip one of her meals for the entire year as punishment for her sins. He is also angry at Alessandra, whose father is Bartolomeo's friend. 
He also passes judgment on Fernanda and Ray before finally he relieves Tommaso of his priesthood as a punishment for his fornication. In the following days, Masetto is sent back to Bruno's castle while the nuns now live with a much older priest. One day, Ginevra and Fernanda are in the garden when Alessandra joins them. They all feel guilty about the fiasco and apologize to each other. They are worried about what's going to happen to Masetto. Meanwhile, Masetto is in prison when Bruno visits him. Bruno killed his own wife in anger, and now he plans to torture Masetto as much as he can before Masetto finally dies. Masetto is now certain of his grim future. He asks the guards to let him go, but they just mess with him. Just then, they see a tortoise carrying a candle on its back, and they follow it. While they're outside, the nuns enter the dungeon and free Masetto. They plan to take him back to the convent, so they place a dummy in the cell and run. While they're running, Fernanda sees the donkey on the bridge, but she's in a hurry. The donkey was bought by Murray, who meets Tommaso at this bridge every day. The film ends with them kissing and finally leaving together.